Income inequality in America is the highest it has ever been. That's next on your Labor Minute. Hello, I'm Mark Harrison. It's got a funny name, but the data it is measuring in the United States right now is anything but funny. Indeed, since the Gini Index of Income Inequality has been tracked some 50 years now, the gulf between the haves and the have-nots in our country has never been so wide. Now, this despite the nation's poverty and unemployment rates being at historic lows. Why? Well, one of the biggest reasons cited by economists is the fact that the federal minimum wage has been stuck at $7.25 an hour for more than a decade. But there's more. Recent gains by people at the lower income levels who have found jobs or better jobs or have benefited in the states that have higher minimum wage standards than the federal level have nowhere near made up for the long-term trend of the wealthy seeing far larger income growth than middle or low income earners. The problem is most pronounced at the coasts in states like New York, Connecticut, and California, and Washington, D.C., and in areas with widespread poverty like Louisiana. Income inequality is at its lowest in Utah, Alaska, and Iowa. The Gini Index measures between zero and one, with zero meaning everyone earns the same, and one meaning only one person makes money. The index in the U.S. is now almost five. That's up from four in 1967. By contrast, no European nation had a score greater than 3.8. I'm Mark Harrison with your Labor Minutes.